Warfarin sodium or Coumadin is ordered for a 64-year-old patient. The nurse knows the action of Coumadin is to number one, inhibit inhi inhibit prothrombin synthesis. Number two, prevent conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. Number three, inactivate thrombin. Number four, inhibit platelet aggregation. So how does Coumadin work? So we have to think about each answer choice. So uh, Coumadin is a long-acting anticoagulant that inhibits, inhibits vitamin K dependent clotting factors. Side effects would be excessive dosage, may cause hemorrhage, rash, fever, uh, pro time uh, used to control uh, dosage, therapeutic range is 1.5 to 2 times normal level, antidote would be vitamin K or mepiton, uh, Coumadin you should eat consistent amounts of green leafy vegetables containing vitamin K. So the correct action, the correct answer would be number one, Coumadin inhibit prothrombin synthesis. If you answer number two, prevent conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin, this is the action of heparin. Number three, inactivate, uh, inactivate thrombin this is another action of heparin and if you answer number four inhibit platelet aggregation this is the action of aspirin and persantine or diperidamol a patient with parkinson's disease receives levodopa the nurse knows that le uh, levodopa works by number one blocking central cholinergic receptors number two restoring dopamine levels in extra uh, pyramidal centers number three releasing dopamine and other catecholamines from neuronal storage sites number four activating dopaminergic receptors in the basal ganglia so the right answer for this one is what so how does levodopa work so we have to think about each answer choice and how it relates to Parkinson's disease. So what would be the needed information? Parkinson's disease, this is caused by impairment of dopamine producing cells in the brain. Levodopa is converted to dopamine in the body to supply the extra pyramidal centers in the brain. Side effects which uh, hemolytic anemia, aggressive behavior, dystonic movements, depression, hallucinations, dizziness, orthostatic hypotension. So the correct answer would be number two, restoring dopamine levels in extrapyramidal center. So this is how uh, levodopa works. Don't take with vitamin B6 or fortified cereals because this will block effects. Um, if you answer number one, blocking central cholinergic receptor, this is the action of cogentin used with levodopa. The side effects for this one is urinary retention, dry mouth, constipation. You have to take it two to three days before effects are seen. If you answer number three, releasing dopamine and other catecholamines from neuronal storage sites, this is an action of symmetral used with levodopa. Side effects are irritability, insomnia, dizziness, and you have to take this one after meal. If you answer number four, activating dopaminergic receptor in the basal ganglia, this is the action of parlodel, used with levodopa. The side effects for this one is dizziness, headache, orthostatic hypotension, abdominal cramps, pleural effusion. You should take this with what? With meals. Next question. The nurse cares for clients being treated for abuse of narcotics. The nurse knows that which of the following data obtained during a client history present the greatest risk for the client developing a disease process. Number one, the use of multiple drugs. Number two, intravenous administration of narcotics. Number three, unsuccessful efforts to decrease drug use. Number four, legal difficulties encountered as a result of drug use. So, 
question here is what is a risk factor for IV drug users? So think about each answer. Okay. Uh, symptoms of narcotic abuse include marked respiratory depression, hyperpyrexia, seizures, ventricular dysrhythmias, pinpoint pupils, stupor, leading to coma. So the correct answer for this one would be number two, intravenous administration of narcotics because IV drug use is associated with increased risk of developing HIV, septicemia, hepatitis, and respiratory failure. So we go back to the uh, question, what is a risk factor for IV drug user? Okay, so intravenous administration of narcotic is the answer. If you answer number one, the use of multiple drug, this is associated with some increased risk of complications, but not as severe as IV use. If you answer number three, unsuccessful efforts to decrease drug use, this is not directly linked to the development of disease process. And if you answer number four, legal difficulties encountered as a result of a drug use, this is not linked to disease process. So the right answer here is number two, intravenous administration of narcotics. Another question, the nurse is performing discharge teaching on a patient with chronic renal failure. The nurse knows that teaching has been successful if the patient selects which of the following menus. Number one, two owns turkey, one half cup noodles, one half cup carrots, one half cup blueberries, and eight owns soda. Number two, four owns baked ham, one half cup potatoes, uh, grating, one half cup canned green beans, one apple and eight ounce of milk. Number three, six ounce of roast beef, baked potato, one half cup broccoli, one orange, and 16 ounce of iced tea. Number four, hot dog with bun, one half cup pork and beans, one cup spinach salad, one banana, and eight ounce lemonade. So what is the appropriate menu for a patient with a chronic renal failure? So you have a chronic renal uh, failure patient. What are you going to serve the patient? So you have to recall the appropriate diet for a chronic renal failure. Um, this is the slow, a chronic renal failure is the slow progressive loss of renal function. Diet therapy includes what? Protein of high biologic value. Increased carbohydrates, maybe some restrictions of sodium and potassium. So number one, two ounce turkey, one half a cup noodles, one half cup carrots, one half cup blueberries, and eight ounce soda. This is the appropriate amount of what? Of uh, HBV protein, low potassium fruit, uh, fruit protein free drink. Number two, that is ham and canned green bananas. These are high in sodium. And number three, if you answer number three, six ounce roast beef, baked potato, one half cup broccoli, one orange, and 16 ounce of iced tea, this is too high in protein and potassium. And number four, hot dog with bun, one half cup pork and beans, one cup spinach salad, one banana, and eight ounce lemonade. This is a what? A LVV protein, high sodium, high potassium, spinach, and banana which is a no-no. So the right answer is number one. The nurse cares for a client after ureteal detotomy. The nurse notes that the client has a left ureteral catheter in place. The nurse should include which of the following in the client's plan of care. Number one, clamp the catheter for short periods of time. Number two, irrigate the catheter every two hours. Number three, Gently advance the catheter if no drainage is observed. Number four, instruct the client that urine from the catheter should be clear. So what is the correct answer here? Uh, first, we have to analyze what is being asked. So the, the one that's being asked here is what is a correct action for a client with ureteral catheter? Strategy. Determine the outcome of each answer. So ureteral lithotomy is surgical removal of calculus from the ureter. So you do not irrigate ureteral catheter. Check incision, uh, check incisional drain, check surgical dressing, 
and you have to encourage oral fluids. So number four is the correct answer. Instruct the client that urine from the catheter should be clear. So immediately after surgery, a small amount of blood tinturing is normal, but then it becomes clear. Increases fluid to promote flow of urine. Uh, if you answer number one, clamp the catheter for a short period of, uh, of time, this is due to small size of catheter. Do not clamp, okay? If you answer number two, irrigate the catheter every two hours, do not irrigate. You have to measure intake and output. Number three, uh, if you answer number three, gently advance the catheter. If no drainage is observed, you should not advance the catheter because this may cause trauma. The nurse cares for a 23-year-old woman admitted with Crohn's disease or regional enteritis. The nurse would expect the patient to be placed on which of the following diets? Number one, high fat, high protein, high residue. Number two, low fat, low protein, low residue. Number three, low fat, high protein, low residue. Number four, high fat, low pro protein, high residue. So what diet is used for Crohn's disease? So we have to think about Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease, original enteritis, this is the inflammatory bowel disease involving segments of the terminal ileum and proximal colon. The entire wall of the colon is affected. Restricts absorptions of nutrients. Uh, signs and symptoms would be right lower quadrant abdominal pain, diarrhea, weight loss, low grade fever, remissions and exacerbations seen. The treatments of this one would be medication such as antidiarrheals or emodium, antispasmodics, anticholinergics, sulfa, sulfa, sulfamamides or asulfidin, steroids, and what would be the diet? Should be high calorie, high protein, TPN, no cocoa, chocolate, citrus juice, cold or carbonated drinks, nuts, seeds, popcorns, and alcohol. So the correct answer here would be, what diet is used for Crohn's disease? So number three, low fat, high protein, low residue, this is non-irritating, high in calories and minerals. If you answer number one, high fat, high protein, high residue, this may cause diarrhea for a patient with Crohn's disease. And number two, low fat, low protein, low residue, this is nutritional deficiency diet. Number four, uh, if you answer this one, this is a high fat, low protein, high residue, this is a high residue and it may cause what? Diarrhea. So the right answer is number three, low fat, high protein, low residue because it's non-irritating, high in calorie minerals.